What is up, Fight Fans? I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I have the great pleasure of being joined by one of the most well-traveled voices in the world of combat sports broadcasting. He's done play-by-play -play for Pride FC, Affliction, Boxing, Bellator, and much more that I probably don't even know about at this point. But he currently lends his talented voice to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and World Lethway Championship and that man is Sean Wheelock. Sean, thank you so much for the time today. Jason, brother, thank you for having me on, man. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, so first, before we get into, you know, your recent work, I want to just learn about you from our side of the equation in media. People really don't know much about us unless they ask about us. Right, <laughs> so, exactly. And this question is something I'll ask a lot of fighters, too, just to get to some background. And what is your journey to combat sports? Was, you know, sports broadcasting always the goal and you kind of fell into MMA work at some point? And were you a fan of the industry even before you started doing it professionally? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I'm someone who, from a very young age, I knew I wanted to work in sports. And unfortunately, I don't have one one thousandth of the athletic ability <laughs> it takes to become a professional mm -hmm. athlete. So I was the type of kid, I'm old enough to have had a tape recorder. I was the type of kid with a tape recorder and I would do mock play-by-play -play and mock mm. sports reports. I always was driven. I can't remember a time when I did not want to work in sports or be a sports commentator. And as a kid, baseball was my passion, but kind of my, my co-passions were all fight sports. I was a huge pro wrestling fan. I was a huge Mark. I wasn't even a smart. I was a Mark. I love your NWA, NWO shirt, by the way. But uh, I, I'm from Kansas City. I still live in a Kansas City suburb called Shawnee. So every Thursday night, 52 weeks a year, all through my childhood, it was NWA wrestling, namely Central mm. States pro wrestling. Yeah. So huge pro wrestling fan. And from that it was boxing. My dad would take me to tough man contest every year. Mm -hmm. I would watch PKA karate on ESPN late at night, anything that had to do with fighting sports. And if you can see the poster behind me, that's an original UFC one print poster okay. that changed my life. November 12th, 1993. My mom paid the 1495 for me to watch the pay-per-view. I've raised 1495. I missed that. <laughs> I'm the son of a single mom. My mom's retired, but she was a public school art teacher. We never had extra money, but I will tell you if I wanted to watch WrestleMania or Mike Tyson yes. or Evander Holyfield or this crazy thing I saw a poster for called the <laughs> UFC, then they ain't even called the UFC. It's called the ultimate fighting championship. Mm -hmm. My mom would happily pay the money. And I'll tell you, Jason, that changed my life. I think I stopped being a hardcore pro wrestling fan that day. I just viewed fighting completely different. You know, in my mind, fighting was blood sport. It was the karate mm. kid. I didn't understand it. And then I watched it and changed my life. The next day, I remember I just wanted to, to put my friends in the guard. I didn't know what the guard was, <laughs> but I wanted to put my friends in the guard, thinking that was some sort of mystical thing that I would do to beat them up. And it ultimately and pardon the pun but it ultimately changed the direction in the course now, of my life i'm familiar with you for your work with bellator you you know you run there ended a few years back and now a new crop of viewers are becoming familiar with you as you introduce them to bkfc and wlc i first wanted to talk about bkfc how did you get involved with the promotion and since they are still fairly new with a developing infrastructure where everyone I'm sure has a, you know, everyone pitches in kind of attitude. Do you feel you get a greater level of influence with them than compared to past promotions? Because you come to them with a well-established resume and a really respectable reputation already. Yeah, no, thank you for saying that. It's a really special relationship. So June 2nd was the second anniversary of the very first BKFC Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship event. But I had been with David Feldman, who was the founder and the CEO of BKFC, about two years even before that, working as a paid consultant for him, mm -hmm. consulting on everything from regulatory issues to what do you think about this ring? What referee mm -hmm. should we use? What do you think about this fighter? Just kind of being what a consultant should be, yeah. just being there, just being available, talking to him. You know, David Feldman and I, about two and a half months before that first show, were at the Ice Palace in Cheyenne, Wyoming, meeting with our buddies from the Wyoming State Athletic Commission walking through, seeing what would happen, bringing this all to fruition. Mm. So BKFC for me, it, it's a family atmosphere. I've experienced that two other times in my career. Currently what I have with Roy Jones Jr. Boxing, uh, boxing series I commentate on UFC Fight Pass. It's a very small organization. That is a family atmosphere. And my first season of Bellator, which was mm. 2010 when Bjorn Rebney was there running it, that was a family atmosphere. 
bare knuckle fighting championship is like that we're all happy to see each other under a normal world circumstance pre COVID, you know, we were doing monthly shows. Mm. So there's the familiarity you get together. You're talking with the guys on the phone anyway, but then you see each other once a month doing the shows and it feels like something there's really special. So much talk about like this alleged $20 million offer that BKFC supposedly made to Mike Tyson. So, so many may be shocked by the number for several reasons. It's just that, you know, his age, he's in his fifties now, but also just surprised that BKFC has that kind of money to dole out and offer. And it, you know, if it is a big risk for the promotion, some how it, it cannot go the way they want. Maybe the predictions and the, the, what they expect from it doesn't work out, but it could. And would you say 20 million could be a pretty good deal considering how popular and legend this guy's like Americana now in a yeah. weird way. This guy went to jail and became like a part of Americana. You know, could the, the attention it could garner could 20 million probably be a decent deal for him? Yeah, and, and I can tell you that the offer is real, that David Feldman, 100%, it's truthful. He spoke to Tyson's people, and that is a real offer. A uh, bare-knuckle fighting championship has great backers. It's extremely well-financed. And you think the whole model is pay-per-view. So Mike Tyson, even at 53, and I think everybody watching, uh, watching our interview, and you certainly saw Jason of Tyson recently hitting the yes. pads, hitting the focus mitts. It was <laughs> yes. insane. Yeah. So if you do the pay-per-view math, you know, let's say they sell at seventy dollars. Let's say they sell it at a hundred dollars. Typically, in pay per view, the promotion gets forty to forty five percent of the split. Mm. I have to think that sells a lot of pay per views. Even if you price it at ninety nine ninety five, I don't see how you don't sell one point five, one point eight, two million pay per views. So it seems like on paper it would make a lot of sense for a lot of people. Mike Tyson has to say yes, but just the fact that. Three years ago, I'm running around talking to my fellow regulators, and they're like, bare knuckle, why would we do that to now? <laughs> There's a legitimate offer to Mike Tyson. It shows how far it, it's come. I'll say this on Mike Tyson. I'll use my wife as a reference. My wife, we've been together about 20 years. She's from England. She knows nothing about sports, nothing about fighting. <laughs> That's the way I like it. If I said to my wife, I'm going to commentate Oscar De La Hoya, she wouldn't know who that is. Right. Or if I said Evander Holyfield, or if I said um, Floyd Mayweather Jr., probably wouldn't Mike Tyson, my wife knows who Mike Tyson is. Mm. You know, Mike Tyson, even at 53, has that gravitas yeah. that he's going to pull in people. Who wouldn't want to watch Mike Tyson in a bare-knuckle fight on pay-per-view? Yeah. Wh whether you're, you're 12 or you're 112, <laughs> if you have even the faintest interest in fighting, you're probably going to buy that pay-per-view. Even if you haven't bought a pay-per-view since Foreman Holyfield in 1991, <laughs> I think you're going to buy that pay-per-view. I hope it happens. Uh, someone last week, actually my MMA gym where I trained, said, would you ask for more money on that fight? I said, no, I think that would be an uncool move. That's something, don't tell David Feldman, I think I would commentate for free. I think Chris Lytle would too. <laughs> How cool now, would BKFC that be? BKFC 6, headlined by Artem Lobo, Paulie Malignaggi, didn't reach you know the grand expectations some in the promotion might have hoped for, but it still did better than previous events for BKFC, so it's still a success. It, it certainly is a step forward, but away from you know pay-per-view buy numbers and stuff like that, do you feel that event might be more of a landmark moment for the promotion and this particular sport that it's maybe given credit for you know you have a ufc vet facing a multi-time boxing champion lobov has become like the face of of, of bkfc right. and to the surprise of most people i would imagine you know he wins the fight did that event and moment in your mind sort of help bkfc gain some of the credibility it may have lacked going yeah, up to the fight 100 the best analogy i can give is to go back to when i was a, a soccer commentator so in 2007, I was at Pride, but um, I was still doing Major League Soccer. And that year, the Los Angeles Galaxy signed David Beckham. Mm. And even though there wasn't the immediate impact that Major League Soccer had hoped for, they suddenly weren't getting 80,000-person crowds. And the second time around, Beckham wasn't selling a ton of tickets. But the after effects, now we yeah. look on 13 years later, how many yeah. clubs there are, the values of the club – suddenly it became an option for top soccer players in the world. Maybe they were a little older, but it became an option, whereas before David Beckham, it wasn't an option. I think what you're talking about with Malinaji Loboff was that. It, it's the highest-selling pay-per-view for Bare Knuckle in the very brief two-year history. Most tickets sold for Bare Knuckle. Look, it wasn't a great fight, and I, I put that more on Malinaji, no disrespect, than Loboff. It yeah, wasn't a great fight. It was yeah. okay. 
wasn't great. I thought Lobov fought great. And I thought Lobov definitely won the fight. Sorry if I'm upsetting Malinaji <laughs> or any of his fans, but I've gone back and I've watched that a couple of times. Something I don't normally do as a commentator, watch fights that I put my voice to, but I was curious. So I've watched that a couple of times, but the residual effects that now you're talking to people like Shannon Briggs, who's under contract, Hector Lombard, my buddy from Bellator, and then had a great run in the UFC, yeah. has fought now for BKFC is under contract. I feel 100% certain that if Lobov Malinaji doesn't happen, there's no offer to Mike Tyson. Now, in, on the flip side of that, let's talk you're working with WLC. And for those that don't know WLC, it's a promotion based off the Myanmar martial art of Lethway. Yep. It is a similar, similar to Muay Thai, but headbutts are loud and they only wear hand right. I actually talked to, to Gerald Ng, so I learned a lot about it last year. I talked to Gerald earlier today. Gerald is the man. He <laughs> was at one championship. He's the CEO of World yep. Lethway Championship. Yep. How did you come about landing that spot? with? Because I get the Feldman connection and everything like that. How did you end up with WLC? And were you like you mentioned, you were familiar with Bare Knuckle and, and the history. Were you familiar with Lethway before I you knew, landed there? I knew the sport. I did not know that there was a promotion that was going to start called World Lightweight Championship. Mm. So I remember it. I was sitting in my hotel room in St. Petersburg, Russia. It says post Bellator and I'm back doing M1 Global. So mm. at this point, I'm going to Russia about every three weeks. Mm. And I get a Facebook message saying, would you be interested in commentating? And that happens quite a little bit. Oftentimes it's a one-off show or a small show or it's just, just people trying to put something together and they're trying to attach names. But I got this and I respond to everybody, big show, small show. If somebody reaches out to me, I'm going to give them the courtesy to go back. If they thought yeah. enough to reach out to me, I will definitely get back to them. And it was Gerald Ong, and who was the, champ, who was the, uh, the, the uh, executive vice president, CEO of World Lightweight Championship. They hadn't launched yet. He asked me if I'd be interested. Could we set up a call? I said, yes, we set up a call. He told me what they were going to do. Uh, I thought super intriguing. We did the first few, and I believe they were on Fight TV, actually, that they aired in Fox Sports Australia, Canal Plus in Asia, maybe a few other outlets in Asia and in, in the Middle East and maybe in Europe. Maybe uh, Sky Sport may have picked it up. wasn't really coverage in the U.S. apart from Fight. But we did them. I voiced them actually from Kansas City on tape delay so they could have English commentary. Mm -hmm. After a few of those, then Gerald said, you know what, we need to bring you over. And I will tell you, I've been to 40-something countries. Myanmar is in my top five, if not mm -hmm. my top three. It wow. is a spectacular country, spectacular people. There's civil unrest that people ask me about. Look, man, that's none of my business. I can only tell you <laughs> how I'm treated. I don't know about that. I do know about the country's history, but it doesn't concern me. Yeah. I'll tell you, I've been there multiple times. The people are wonderful. The culture is wonderful. It's safe. It's clean. The nicest hotel I stayed at in 2019, and I'm wow. a guy who's on the road a lot, or at least I was pre-COVID, <laughs> was, was in Mandalay, Myanmar. It is a first-class promotion with a capital first class. And it's so exciting because the way I describe it to people, just like you said, it's Muay Thai, but it's the cultural interpretation of mm. Muay Thai right. by, uh, by Myanmar. It used to be called Burma. It's now called Myanmar. Mm -hmm. It's their cultural fighting sport. So is Muay Thai, any of us who've ever trained Muay Thai know what we're told the first day, it's the art of eight limbs. In, in Letway, they yep. say it's the art of nine, nine. limbs. The ninth mm -hmm. limb is the head, the forehead, their head butts. And it changes it. You're not seeing your pro wrestling guy. You're not seeing the Andre yeah. the Giant. Yes. But you're seeing the pivotal yeah. in fighting dirty boxing or in gloved boxing, those illegal but still work headbutts, to open up space. All the fights I've commentated, I've never seen anyone dropped in World Lightweight Championship by a headbutt. They open up space, but it's an added dimension. They have mm. the hand wraps, and I love it. They have fighters from Myanmar. They have fighters from Russia. Uh, from England, from Australia. Yeah. We've had Canadians, we've had Americans, we've had Brazilians, a lot of fighters from Southeast Asia. It is a phenomenal show. And it's something that's resonated in the culture. We're now in our second year on UFC Fight Pass, which has opened up the audience in the US and Canada. People respond to that show. The events feel big because they are big. Mm. And you're literally getting some of the best strikers in the world. Because not a lot of people train Myanmar, uh, live in Myanmar yeah. and train uh, Letway. So the foreign fighters are coming in. They might be traditional Western kickboxers. Uh, we've had MMA fighters. You have a lot of Muay Thai fighters. But they have to adapt. They have to learn this style. And it is such a cool sport and such a cool promotion. 
going back to Gerald, and Gerald was like the nicest CEO I've ever talked yes, to. Yes, he like, is. He, did, he doesn't even seem like a CEO. He like, you're in charge. Like, but anyway, he's so nice. But when I interviewed him, I suggested the idea of cross promotion with BKFC or even a talent exchange idea. And he was, he was up for it. And that's why he mentioned that you work for them too. Yeah. What are your thoughts on something like that? And should promotions like this, two of the most well-known, maybe the most well-known bare knuckle promotions out there, try and help each other out, not only just to bring up their specific organizations, but to bring up the concept of bare knuckle and take it from Taboosville, you know? Well, you know, I, I can tell you that I've already talked to Gerald about David Feldman and vice versa, mm. because I think there could be a symbiotic relationship. Mm. One thing that I love about Gerald, and it's the same thing, and many things that I love about Dave Feldman as well, is that they understand that fighters have to make a living. Yeah. So with Gerald, he knows, look, they're doing five events a year. People aren't going to sign exclusive. And you're not going to have one guy on the same card, all five cards for the year. Just don't fight for any other lightweight promotions. And they're, WLC is the biggest in the world. Yeah. David Feldman, you can go fight MMA. You can go box. Uh, Joey Beltron, before he won the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, uh, or the BKFC heavyweight title, uh, when he defeated Chase Sherman, he had just had an MMA fight in Russia. Mm. So David Feldman understands you can do other disciplines. So those are two promoters and two promotions who would say, yeah, let's try something. I've talked to Johnny Bedford, a really good friend of mine, who's currently the 135 champion in BKFC UFC vet, about fighting in Letway. Had mm. COVID not hit, we probably would have had a World Letway Championship event, probably almost definitely, in the United States this summer. And that's been pushed back, obviously, because of, of COVID-19. Yeah. But Bedford's somebody we talked to. You know, David Feldman gets it. We can share fighters. We can promote each other. And there's no competition.